I'm Rupert Thompson. I'm program director at Summer Hall. Summer Hall. And we're sitting in Summer Hall. And Summer Hall, we're here to interview you because we've heard that Summer Hall is a great venue for the Fringe this year. I've heard good things, but I've also heard that it's a permanent art centre. Are you involved in both sides of this? I am, yeah. For the last few months, the festival has dominated the schedule because we're putting on around 50 performances, 20 exhibitions over the course of a month, and that's more than enough to keep most of your brain going for a number of months. But we are looking forward to the rest of the year and looking forward to building bridges between the festival and the sort of Edinburgh peak time and the rest of the year when things could perhaps be a little more lively. So what about Summer Hall? You know, I've heard a little... Heard little bits before the festival came along that Summer Hall was interesting. Why is it so important? What, what, what's so special about Summer Hall outside the festival? Or what are you trying to do? I guess what's special about it outside the festival is the same as what's special about it within the festival. Yes. It's a combination of various factors, including a commitment to the very best, forward-looking experimental art, an awareness of the history of that <laughs> form, those media, and with an archive and educational basis oh, under my, underpinning yeah. that. So who's underpinning it financially, the, the university? Uh, no. Um, and, but just to round off on the previous question Sorry, as well, because the other side of it is just wanting to be a fun social space where people can come, wait, make work in a relaxed fashion, and socialise together and generate ideas together. So. I was comparing this place, because I didn't know too much about it yet, this was earlier today with a friend of mine, to the big block along at Jock's Lodge, the great big block that used to be the prison department, and it's full of art, arts, artistic stu art studios. Arts complex. I think that's it. That is just But I was saying, I've, not ever been, I've never been invited to an event there, I know lots of people that have studios there. Yeah. And she, the woman, we were talking about this, and she was saying, well, what's important about this place, there are social... There's a social side to it, a cafe, and the further there's a, a chance for things to happen. But yeah, I mean, we're, certainly during the festival and increasingly year-round, we'll be presenting events to the public here. And we're also looking to become a production space, so this is somewhere people can come and just stay, meet, make work, rehearse, build it up to a high standard where it can be presented to the public. Okay, then what about the festival uh, itself? Is this the second year? Or were you working on it last year? year? Yeah, we did a festival here last year when we were renting the space from the university. And we were able to run uh, an exciting programme, but one hindered by the short amount of time we had to prepare. And uh, so we built on that this year, and we're presenting a programme about four or five times bigger. So how many performance spaces have you got? Depends how you look at it, because we've got a lot of performances running in uh, little rooms, attics, um, outside. This sounds quite, ex this sounds it, it quite exciting, actually. So, yeah, we've got probably six formal performance spaces, right. none of which are exactly standard. Many We've got the original lecture theatres from the old Dick Vets, which make for very characterful, charismatic spaces. But we also have continued a culture of working with the space and putting performances on in suitable spaces we find throughout the building for whatever the work may be. And have you got any features that you would automatically think about if a press journalist come in, come in and ask you well, what's, what, is, what are your headlines? There's so many. Um, I mean, we've got uh, one show I saw in Poland in December this year is called Songs of Leah by Song of the Goat Theatre. Right. And so it's a work in progress and it got a standing ovation. It's a stunning interpretation of King Lear by Shakespeare, but using very little of the Shakespearean text, but actually using ancient European folk songs to get to the depth right. of the emotion in the play. And is that on how long is the run here? It's about two, two and a half weeks. Two, two and a half weeks. So it is much like the rest of the fringe. There are some shows on for short runs, others on for long runs and things like that? Yeah, and we try to be flexible to support what people want. Generally, it, it's nice if people will take on the whole three weeks, but we don't want to put pressure on our company. Okay. Well, thank you very much.